right? Yes. Okay. Hello, everybody. It's a big pleasure, and thanks uh, to all, to uh, Tallinn for this uh, amazing uh, symposium. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I can say we are proud to be uh, part of this translocal project. My name is Brita Köhler. I'm the head of education of Museion uh, in Bozen, uh, Bolzano. It's um, dual lingual region of the north of Italy. Uh, in the museum is the Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art, and I brought my two colleagues with me. So there's Sarah Greenwood, you will listen to her later. She's our um, communication and marketing manager, and then there is Frida Carazzato, she's the curatorial assistant, and I'm quite uh, excited. So maybe I relax now when I come to our <laughs> to our uh, to my text. So, okay, technique. I try it like this. Okay, it's better like this. So um, I re re will read it. This is uh, better for you because then you understand more. When uh, uh, <laughs> I guess, so. Um, I would like to start uh, to speak about a little bit of uh, Bolzano, which is a quite particular region. Um, we have 100,000 inhabitants, and that for Bolzano is the largest city in South Tyrol. Um, South Tyrol is an autonomous province in the northern Italy, situated in the Alps, uh, with an own special statute and a very high standard of living. Like many border zones, Bolzano is a town with a complex and involving cultural and sociological situation. Bolzano is currently experiencing the same uh, migration issues uh, that are affecting many places in Europe. The city is, in fact, host to a number of uh, asylum seekers but these are not the only migrants to have come to Bolzano over recent year. I'm another one. And then uh, the history of migration uh, in the region goes back a long way. A particularly significant period was the 1920s, during which uh, South Tyrol was subject to intensive inter Italianization and forced under fascism. Uh, during which South Tyrol was subject to intensive Italian, uh, I'm sorry, with the aim of outnumbering the local German-speaking population through forced Italian immigration. Since then, the population of the region has continued to increase with new citizens coming also from other EU countries, Eastern Europe, Asia, Asia and North, North Africa. This is our building. Museum, in its role as a museum of contemporary art, has always been committed to connecting past and future, as well as different geographical areas and cultures, mixing fact and fiction, both in its artistic programs and its mediation activities. It strives to be a platform share, for sharing ideas and thoughts on contemporary culture, art, and society, both on a local and international level. By participating in the projects, such as Translocal Museum as Toolbox, Museion intends to reflect on the tools an institution of contemporary art can adapt to communicate with and engage young people. So, here you see our ground floor called the Passage because it's always open to the public. There is uh, art to see, there is the, is the area of the cafe, is uh, the meeting point and is the place where we uh, weekly on every uh, Thursday have events because on Thursday museum is open until 10, uh, 10 o'clock in the evening and it's exactly there where we had, where you will later see our two toolbox event then at the end of the of our project for the residency museion invited polish artist marcin polak he's really call he really calls himself marcin polak from poland <laughs> uh, from the partner city of wuch 
In his projects, Pollock attempts to suggest dialogue, um, dialogue among citizens, institutions, and elites. His way of working is to subtly sabotage dyna uh, traditional dynamics and activate new ones, bringing into the processes of a project unexpected and non-conventional methods. He prefers working on urban interventions and projects of participation, involving himself in everyday processes and real-life situations. Cultural manager, uh, curator and artist Evelina Chimlewska a com okay, <laughs> half green light from Poland, accompanied Marcin Pollack on his trip to Bolzano. During the project in Bolzano, she acted as co-mediator during the various workshops and events held with the project team. In the beginning, uh, when we applied, there were 40 uh, people, young people between 15 and 25 years old interested in our project. But then at, uh, at the end, there were 15 participants from different cultural backgrounds recruited directly at the museum, in schools, the university, youth groups, and a center for housing asylum seekers took part in the 10-day residency. Communication was in English, German, Italian, French, Polish, and many other languages. The fact that the group was so heterogeneous emphasized the topic of the workshop, which was to reflect on individual and collective stories of migration in the present and in the past, and on the role of the mass media in influencing our opinions on these stories. So here you see our participants. Uh, just a second. On their guiding tour through the city. The group visited various historical as well as contemporary points of cultural interest related directly and indirectly to the history of migration and ended up at one of the centers in the city called the Hotel Alpi, where a number of asylum seekers are currently housed and supported on integration matters. The residency was rounded up with an event organized by the group and communicated via a flyer of their own creation. So now here you see um, uh, at the right, you see Martin Pollack and beside Evelina um, working with our participants in, yeah, the, red, the girl with the red hair is a German speaking, Haile is a, an African friend of us speaking English and French. Then we have two Italian participants, so language is a big theme in our region. Um, the, when we were listening to, uh, to the Tate, uh, Modern Tate, there was the idea of the game, play together, we did this as well. Um, and then they worked on the event they wanted to plan. They uh, did a big uh, research on the mass media, newspapers, um, Facebook, uh, online articles. Uh, they met a local journalist and had an interview with him. And then they uh, started to organize the event in the passage, in the ground floor of the uh, museum. The whole of the ground floor uh, of the museum, a space normally used for other purposes, had been put at the disposal of the group. Texts, articles of research, interviews, projections, drawings and videos were installed at museum by the group for the public to view during the event. There was music, dancing, drinks and conversation. The group members welcomed and mixed with visitors, finding themselves in a role that would usually be occupied by museum staff. 
So that was nice. Uh, here you see um, some uh, images of how uh, the installation of the event was. The articles. Here you see our African friends uh, working on the big draw that, that uh, then was fixed on the exhibition wall. And the DJ, music, conversation. And this is the whole group. The residency offered an opportunity to discover and test new and exciting tools for communication with and involving young people from different backgrounds. And it became clear in the initial stages that not just publicity and ad advertising tools should be considered, but two-way communication between the target group and the various members of the museum staff is essential. Listening to the ideas and requests of the young people brings to light the importance they place on participation and on having the chance to create something working alongside professionals from the museum and artists on issues they can relate to. So we were pleasantly uh, surprised to find how much young people don't actually communicate only digitally, and it came out in, in most of all the, the lectures today, but seek social situation and the chance of being together, of share experience and yeah, peer-to-peer -peer situations. I will close uh, with um, three more pictures. Um, we had, uh, just uh, to give you an idea how the project goes on, after the event, we had uh, Katrin, from, uh, Katrin Bucher from Gra uh, Gra Kunsthaus Graz as a guest, as well as Znejana Pintaric, the director of the Museum uh, of uh, Art in Zagreb, and together we discussed what has happened and how can we go on. And uh, in fact, uh, after uh, um, they started to work via Skype to get in contact with Marcin and Evelina, here they are uh, back in Poland, and our participants, uh, we had a Skype, uh, confer uh, Skype, Skype meeting with them, and now they work uh, on a video. Um, that will be material of the exhibition that starts in 2017. And yeah, hopefully uh, some of them will remain with us and go ahead uh, to, to create this adventure together. Thanks a lot. <laughs>